G'day, let's have a look at what's inside this Wambo projector. This specific model is the Wambo X5, brand new projector. Let's pretty much just dig in and have a look what's inside. So on the front, we've got a lens. That's obviously where the projection comes out. On the front here, it might be a bit hard to see, but there is a little camera. So this does have auto keystone correction and autofocus as well. So that just faces the front, obviously wherever that's being projected, looks at the screen and then it can auto correct for things. On the top, just a couple of simple little buttons on off and then you got a little arrow and then just a little OK button. On the back, we've just got a little bit of an interface. So HDMI there, AV input, headphones, and a couple of USB ports, as well as your AC in. And then we've got a speaker on the back here. So I think this does actually have two speakers. So I think that there might be some other speaker slot. And then this here will just be there for ventilation. So there'll be a fan inside that, that pulls air through it. And on the other side, likewise, we've just got another insulation slot there. Um, as far as how this is put together, I would assume there's a few screws underneath these pads and then this outer plastic case will probably come apart fairly easily. There is also an air filter here as well, so you just push it in and then that comes out nice and easy. So really good to see actually we've got that little bit of a zigzag design, not just a flat bit of something. Just the reason that's there is just to increase that surface area of the filtration material and obviously filter the air before it goes in through the projector. So I'll take that off and I think there might actually be a screw in there. So yeah, there is actually one screw inside here. Um, I'll undo that and then I'll also rip these pads off and see, because there'll probably be screws there and, and just open this up. All right, so there's always one screw that gets you. So there was a hidden screw underneath the actual little kickstand for this. So I just took a little bit to take apart. Once that was unscrewed, the whole thing came apart pretty easily. So I'll just take this little connector here off. Actually, that can probably stay like that. So up the top here, we've just got these buttons. So they're just gonna be little click buttons on a small little PCB underneath here that's just mounted there. And then we've pretty much opened up the brains of the whole projector so by opening up that case. So the first thing that's quite noticeable here, okay, it does actually just pull out fairly easily. Here is just a power supply board for it. So firstly, we've got this really nice insulation on the bottom, just isolating all of those little exposed contacts from the front, although there is a plastic case there as well. So but that's really good to see an extra layer there just to insulate the user as much as possible, which is really nice to see. So obviously this is the power supply module. We've got that 240 volts coming in from here. So AC coming in, a uh, little capacitor there. That's a common mode choke. So that'll just be doing uh, filtering. Effectively it's a low pass filter, filters out any high frequency stuff. Here we just have a bridge rectifier. So that little black component with that little hole in the middle. So that's just gonna be converting the AC into DC and then sending it forward onto these capacitors and transformer here. So this transformer here is what's gonna be stepping it down from, in this case, 240 volts into, I don't know, 12 volts. Like I said, it actually says it on the board there, 12, a bunch of 12 volts. So that transformer there will be switched on and off uh, by this transistor here and switched on and off just to, to control that power flowing through it. So this will be a switch mode power supply. So we've got that bridge rectifier stepping down the voltage that's been cleaned up from coming in. So it's really good to see through the capacitors just to act as tiny little batteries just to take out any ripples there at all. And then we've got send it through the transformer and then we've got a couple more smaller capacitors down here. So 50 volt capacitors. So these ones here will basically just ensure that output voltage from the transformer or the output current here is just as steady and clean DC um, um, as it can be. And then that looks like another couple of little common mode chokes there as well, just to do a little bit more filtering of whatever it then sends onwards. So really nice little board. There is a little bit of Celastic up here holding these components together, same as down the bottom in these little gaps. So that's good to see, just for any sort of vibration or movement, it just prevents these components from being able to be moved. Uh, just that mechanically secures them in place. So, so that's that's, Really good. I think there's enough. These bigger components don't really need it. Same as these two capacitors. They're pretty big. They're soldered on pretty well, but but really nice little little power board and, and, and good to see. So I'm just going to slide that back in and plug it in just so I don't forget where anything actually went and forget to plug things in. 
So we've got AC coming in again, as I said, that'll just come from the back here. So there's a little port here on this side, that little slit. And then you just got the AC coming in to the top, going through all that filtering, get stepped down. And then we're probably gonna have, like I said, that's the LED on this side actually. So these two here are just gonna be positive and negative for powering the LED. So that's gonna be very power hungry. I think this is 1,100 anti lumens. Um, I'll put a link down below, so if you want to actually know what this is and where to buy it or look at the specific description of it, you can look at it there. But I think it's just over a 1,000 lumens, so that's going to be quite power hungry. So it's got its own connector going straight into the LED. And then we've got a couple more, so we've got 12 volt, negative, negative, 12 volt, positive, positive. So we've got two other 12 volt lines coming off of this board. And then on the PCB, there is one more connector here that I really don't think it was plugged in because I can't find anything that goes into it, but it just says fan, positive and negative. Uh, so there is a fan over here, which we'll look at in a sec, but it's got this power coming to it here and then going to the main board here. So I think we don't need to worry about that. I didn't think that was plugged in. They probably make this generic power supply board and use across a bunch of their projectors. So for some of their maybe more powerful ones, there might be a separate fan that actually plugs in straight into the power supply. Um, all right, so then we've got all that power coming into this board here. So this board here is what's going to be the motherboard of the actual projector. So that'll be doing all of the processing and all of the video, taking the video input, converting it to however it needs to, and then controlling that little LCD screen that's going to be underneath here. So we'll, we'll open this up in a little bit to see how the projector actually makes the, the picture because there's one really bright LED here. It'll just shoot that light over. LCD screen here that displays the picture, bounces off some more mirrors, and then goes out to, to be projected outwards. Um, so just having a look on the side here, we've got this little, we've got this really nice grilled radiator here for the heat sink or for the cooling system. Uh, so it's got three pipes inside those little copper pipes coming to a bigger heat sink here, and it does seem to have a couple of little sensors on it. So that's probably going to be um, thermometers to actually measure that. Although LED, okay, so no, so that's where the LED is going to be. So these two cables here, because they're actually quite thick. So these two cables here come from the power supply and that's what's actually powering the LED. So the LED chip is most likely going to be on the other side of this big heatsink. This tiny little thing here is going to be the thermometer measuring the temperature right behind the LED. And then the main purpose of this grill here is just to dissipate all of that heat from uh, generated from that actual LED there. Then right next to that on the side, we've got this one little speaker here, and then there's another speaker up the top. So it's a little bit hard to show. So then there's another speaker up the top here. So that's what that little cutout there would be on the side. And then if we flip it over, there is one more speaker inside there. So that's actually good to see. It does have those two or three speakers and one of them seems to be a bit, bit of a subwoofer and then the other ones are just, just the normal speakers. All right, I'll flip it over, have a look on this side here. So we've got a really nice big fan here. This is actually, this is a lot of momentum. This might even be metal. No, it's not. Okay, so it is, it is just composite plastic. I'll just shine a bit of light on that so you can see it a bit better. So a really nice big beefy fan that spins. So that's gonna be, that's going to be intaking air in right through that filter. So this filter that we saw before that just slides into the assembly right here and clicks in there. So it clicks it in and holds it in. So we've got that air filter there, that fan, the way that's going to work is it's going to spin around really fast and then basically just push the air outwards. So using the centrifugal force, push that air outwards and it's going to have a little channel down the bottom over on this side here and it will channel that air most likely out this way. And then that's just what's gonna be flowing through that heat sink. And then that heat sink is just gonna be expelling that hot air straight out of the projector. So it's nice to see they've done it this way. They pull in really nice, clean, fresh air or, or cold air into it, run it through the whole module, and then right at the end, run it through the actual heat sink of the LED, which is what's gonna by far be producing the most heat. So it's good just to get that heat straight out of the projector and not actually be coming in through the rest of the projector trying to cool anything there because all of these other parts will produce very little heat. Maybe that maybe the PSU will produce a little bit, but that's in its own little channel there that'll get expelled outwards anyway. But again, the LED is just gonna be the biggest, biggest heat producer of this. And then on the front here, we just have this lens. So this does rotate. This does have a little motor inside here and then a little switch as well. So you can see that slit. It's got a little bit of a bearing there or actually just a brass washer around that just to limit that friction. And then it's just got this sliding thing. So as this slides, this is actuated. It does have a motor in there. So I won't turn it right now. I don't want to break any of that gearbox. 
but this will turn and then as that focuses or as that gets pulled in and out that just moves the lenses on the inside and then focuses focuses that so with what I said before, with how this projector actually displays that picture, because currently we just have a really bright LED light on this side. Now, how do we get the picture? That's done underneath here. So it might take me a little bit just to dig this out because it does have a bunch of these connectors coming right on top of it. But I'll unscrew this, open this up, and then I'll show you exactly how this works. Okay, so that did take a little bit of fiddling around because I wanted to be very careful with this, the way I take this out. And actually, that's still not okay. All right, so here we go. This here is an actual LCD screen. So this will actually be three different LCD screens at the right angle. There we go. You can see that if I if I put the reflection of the LEDs in the back, you can see it break up into a bunch of different colors. So this will actually be three different screens. And have a quick look at that. And I'm just going to pretty much put that straight back in and not mess with it anymore because I really don't want to get dust on that. So what that is, is it's a sandwich of effectively three different LCD colors. So you've got red, green, and blue. And then as the light passes through that, those different LCD colors will turn on in different configurations to actually then mix those colors and produce that image on the screen. So all of the light coming from that LED passes straight through this LCD screen. And then, sorry, just let me put this back. So all of the light coming from that LED passes directly through that LCD screen that you saw and then bounces off of a mirror here and then goes and actually gets projected outwards. So this LCD screen underneath here or the combination of those three different color LCD screens, that's what actually forms the image. And then the backlight here just needs to be a really strong LED to shine through that screen and get it through. There's a couple of other lenses and other bits and pieces inside as well. So for that focusing mechanism and for the correction, uh, there is another little amplifying lens just in front of that just to then merge all those colors together. And again, you can see the way this is angled here. It just has a mirror, so it just comes in, bounces, and then goes straight through, straight out through that. And this ribbon cable here with a, a lot of little contacts, that's just what powers those um, LCD screens that I, that I pulled out before. So I really just want to be very careful with this and get it in exactly back how it was so this little cable was tucked in under that board nicely tucked away and then this just covering the whole thing up so again I really don't want to leave that open uh, open for too long because a lot of little dust and speckles of dust will get in there and anything that will obviously be on that screen will tarnish the actual display of this whole projector so if you are opening any of this sort of things up just be really careful with that screen and this whole Really the whole lens assembly, if things get out of whack, um, it doesn't take much for it to get out of whack. And then when you project it a few meters away, all that just gets amplified. This is Wi-Fi enabled, so, well, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. So you've got these two different antennas. You can see from the board there coming here, and then it's just stuck down onto the bottom. So it might even be quite hard to see on the camera, but it's just this little, little ribbon of tape that's stuck down. There's one there. And then we've got another one on this side here. So that's really good to see that we've got two antennas. So this might, I think this is actually dual band. So we've got one here and one here. And you can see the orientation. This one's oriented this way and this one's oriented this way. So that's really good because depending on how this projector sits with respect to the antennas on the router, on the Wi-Fi router, if it only really had the antennas in one direction, it might be completely out of whack and lose a lot of signal and, and not connect as well. But it does have them oriented different ways. So that that's really good to see. Um, the other thing that I didn't really touch on was obviously this camera out the front here. So it does have this camera and it is quite hard to see and I don't want to go digging in all the way through there, some of the sensitive stuff, but there is just a little PCB down the back there. Not sure how well that'll show up, but there is just a little PCB down the bottom there. Um, that basically just has that camera inside and then that camera the signal from that camera just comes up straight through into the board And then again, this motherboard just does does more of the processing for it So I think I'll leave it there today. Obviously, I'll put this back together But that's pretty much it. That's an overview of what's inside Really any of these projectors. I know this is this Wambo one specifically, but any of these sort of lower-end consumer projectors or even mid-range 
projectors are done very similarly like this. So now you know what's inside a projector and roughly how it works. Thanks very much for watching. If you liked it, hit that like button. It really helps out the channel. And if you want to see more of this sort of stuff, then definitely consider subscribing. So have a good one.